What's up guys and good morning from Moscow. I can't wait to take you on a trip today to a region in Russia where I've never been to so far. It's the Tula region some few hundred kilometers away from Moscow and it's mostly known for being the birthplace to the author Lev Tolstoy. I'm sure there also will be many other things of interest that we can find there. I'm planning on staying there for a couple of days, so hopefully tonight we'll be able to check in in a nice luxurious hotel in provincial Russia. Let's do this! <laughs> at the train station in Kurskaya. It's a little bit different from the train stations that I'm used to. The most popular are Leningradskaya, Yaroslavskaya, Kazanskaya Vakzal. And these are the stations that I've already shot some videos from. But today I'm in Kurskaya, which is on the eastern side of Moscow. Let's take a look at the destinations, which is always a really cool thing to do, isn't it? The train that I'm taking is the 947, the very top one, going from St. Petersburg all the way to Belgorod. And this is the train that I'm going to be on. Then you can go to Nizhny Novgorod, a few hours away from Moscow. You can go to Kislovsk, on the, on the very south of Russia. You can go to Izhevsk, in Siberia, Chelyabinsk, not far from Kazakhstan. And why not Adler, which is basically Sochi. And Sochi is a, quite a popular destination for international tourists too, so you might know about that. This train having come, this train having come from St. Petersburg and going all the way, continuing all the way to Belgorod, is a sleeper train. Wow, the sun is welcoming me here in Tula, and not only that, look at this, a train carrying a, what's this, a tank? It's not really a tank, but it's definitely a weapon of war. And you know what they say about Russians, that they're a nation obsessed with everything warlike, everything related to war. There goes your confirmation. These are definitely tanks, look at this. And there goes my train, who kindly took me all the way from Moscow to Tula, and now it's continuing all the way to Belgorod. Dobro pajalovat v Tulu. Welcome to Tula. So I'm planning on staying in Tula for around two days, which means I need to find a hotel. But at the same time, it's around lunchtime right now, so I probably have to go and look for something to eat first. And then, Mavskovsky Vagzal. The station that takes you to Moscow. There's a Gastinitsa, there's a hotel right in front of me on the other end of the street. Hotel Moskva, Gastinitsa Moskva, which means Hotel Moscow. They don't have much imagination here when it comes to uh, naming hotels and streets and stuff like that. If you've ever been to Russia, you probably know about that already. At the same time, according to my research on the internet, the station of Tula, where I basically am now, is a bit far off the center, so... Goodbye, Gastinitsa Moskva! So yeah, there is a Burger King right in front of this shopping mall, but why would I eat at Burger King? I want to try some proper Russian food. Why would I come all the way to Tula and eat something and have something that I could have in Montgomery, Alabama? And it would be exactly the same. So this looks like it's the main Praspekt, the main avenue of the city of Tula. And around half a million people live here, so it's around the size of Liverpool, let's say. I'm quite curious as to what I can find here in Tula. I already know that I absolutely need to visit the Kremlin, which is the very center of the city. It's basically where I'm going now. Um, you can also find the main square, the Lenin Square, which of course you can find anywhere in Russia. And there's a really cool museum about weapons. I just told you, I showed you the monument that you could find in the station. I just told you the Russians are obsessed about wars and weapons as well. So there's a museum 
It's supposed to be cool, it looks good on the internet, it looks good on TripAdvisor, so... So during times like this, as we know in Europe, pretty much no fun is allowed at all. Concerts are cancelled, events of any kind are not allowed. Whereas here in Russia, life almost goes on as normal. Look at this wall and look at these banners. Larissa Rubalskaya. Živi spokojna strana. Larissa Rubalskaya. Now I have absolutely no clue who this lady is, but she's doing something. At the Garaskoi Kantierny Zal. The concert hall of Tula. 18 of November. Be there. Look at these guys. I think these guys are popular in Europe as well. I'm not sure. Over there in the distance is the reason why I decided to take the train all the way from Moscow this morning and come to Tula. The Tulski Kremlin, the Kremlin of Tula, along with the Ploshad Lenin, Lenin Square, and everything there is nice and interesting to see here in Tula, the capital of the Tulska Oblast. And by the way, since I'm here, I'll take the chance to tell you a little bit about my desire to travel across the entirety of Russia. I want to step foot in each and every one of the Russian federal subjects. As you know, Russia is around uh, 80, a little bit more than that, different federal subjects. Uh, pretty much regions, states, whatever you want to call them, they have republics, there are republics, proper regions, cities, of course, like Moscow and St. Petersburg. And uh, I I'd like, I'd really like to try and see if I can enter, if I can uh, travel to each one of those. It's going to be difficult, of course. But for me, Tula and Tulska Oblast is a new one. I had, of course, been to Moscow, St. Petersburg, the Moscow region, which is different than Moscow City, Leningradskaya Oblast, the region of St. Petersburg. I've been to Vladimirskaya Oblast, the Yaroslavsky Oblast, and I think Ivanovska Oblast, and uh, the region of Sochi, which I'm pretty sure is Krasnodarsky Krai. For me, today, coming to Tula and Tuska Oblast is a new one, so I still have 70 something to go. And ladies and gentlemen, I made it! Over there are the walls of the Kremlin. I'll take you there in a little bit. And here on the right side, you can see the Russian flag flying high, the huge Russian flag flying high over there. Tula Gorat Giroy again. And that's, or rather that should be, not quite sure, but that should be the very center of town. That is Ploshad Lenina. I'm going to repeat it again that in every Russian town with a population of over, let's say, 50 people, there is a square dedicated to Lenin. And you can find it here, Plusha de Lenina. This one is actually quite huge. You know, last time I've been to Alexandrov, there was a square dedicated to Lenin in the very center of the city, but it wasn't this big. As big as the statue of Lenin is the Russian flag flying at full mast over there. And now, over there it says Tula Gorat Geroi, which means that Tula was one of the 12 cities that were denominated hero cities or city heroes, probably hero cities after the invasion of Nazi Germany after the Second World War. In fact, Tula was one of the 12 cities which fought so hard and so resiliently against the invasion of Nazi Germany, along with Moscow, St. Petersburg, Murmansk, Smolensk, Minsk, Brest, Kiev, Odessa, Sevastopol, Kerch, Stalingrad, which is now Volgograd, and I'm missing one, Novorossiysk. Tula is also a really popular destination to get married in. Who would not want that, getting married in Tula? I surely would.
There's a nice pathway right towards the entrance of the Kremlin, which is really nice considering it's November, so you don't have the snow, the white snow that you might find from December onwards, but it's also not summertime, so you can't expect flowers and green leaves, the very same flowers and green leaves that you would expect during the summer. I have to say, I'm loving it. I'm loving Tula so far, I'm enjoying it. I think it's a really good looking town, I must say. You have a map here, which is pretty cool. Let's check it out. This is what you used to use before Google Maps, before Yandex Maps and whatnot. So we are basically here, entering from the east side. Now we're entering, we're entering just from there, Balshaya Kremlievskaya Ulitsa. We get to the main church and we have a look around. I'm really enjoying this space inside the fortress of Tula, in the center of Tula. As it's read on Wikipedia that it dates back to the 16th century. So all of these that you can see right here, probably not this one, is around 500 years old. Now, although they do say that Tula is the most Soviet town and city in the whole of Russia, I mean, I kind of get it, the Prusa Lenina, the Lenin Square definitely looks very much Soviet, but I mean, if you look at the Kremlin here, for example, the Kremlin in Moscow looks way more Soviet than this one. This really looks like European medieval. So I might actually disagree with that. The Tulski Kreml. You can see it. You can see it here. Tulski Kreml, Targovie. So this is the... This is quite blurry, I'm not quite sure. If you can't make out what this picture is about, don't worry, because I can't either. And uh, it's supposed to be the Kremlin of um, Tula at the beginning of the 20th century. Wow, look at this nice space right behind the Kremlin. You have a cafe over there, you have a ra nice Russian heart with the colors of the Russian flag and look over there in the distance there is even a ferris wheel a Soviet ferris wheel but beware though Kupatsa Zaprishino swimming is prohibited So here is some other evidence that Tula is indeed the most Soviet town of the whole of Russia. Now, I'm not quite sure what this building is about, I'll try and figure it out in a minute. But you can see from here the hammer and sickle in the middle, you can see Lenin at the very top. And now uh, at the bottom you can see RSFSR, which basically means the Russian Soviet Federation, the Russian Soviet Republic. Proletaries of all countries unite together. And over here, Velikaya Pabieda, Gordas Pakalieni. The great victory, referring to the Second World War, Gordas Pakalieni, the, uh, the proudness of an entire generation, referring of course to the veterans, the generation of the veterans of the Second World War. Now let me tell you and let me educate you about Russian roads. Most of the time, especially in big cities, they're really large with very much often multiple lanes. So what you do, you don't cross the road as normal, you don't expect to see a zebra crossing, but most of the time there's an underpath. Let's check out this Soviet underpath. Let's do it. Oh my god! How can I avoid this pool? Oh. Aside from the appearance, it doesn't... It's not too bad, it doesn't smell too bad which is very much often a problem with underpass like this. This onion-shaped building is indeed what I was looking for. The Musée Arugia, the weapon museum. Let's check it out. 
This is the huracan, the hurricane. Wow. Vaya vaya machina, blah 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 blah. Huracan. War machine. Hurricane. Wow, look at this one. This is an absolute unit. Look at the missiles that this tank can send. Wow. Or rather, what's the right word? Launch, probably. Yeah. Look at the missiles that this tank can launch. Wow. They're like four meters long. Insane. Wow. I don't think I've ever seen a tank like in my life. Of course, not on video. Спасибо вам большое. Now, First World War, this is how Russian soldiers used to be equipped with. Now, of course, at least for the first two years of the First World War, before the Russian Revolution eventually started, Wow, this is so cool. They have a flight simulator. So in this hall right here, you have portraits of all the most important figures and generals of the Second World War. Well, I have something for you that's going to generate some kind of controversy. Have you ever seen a portrait of Josef Stalin. Well, that was a good one. Short, quick, but intense. I don't have much time, unfortunately. Well, guys, the sun is almost setting here in Tula. Which means I have to retreat back to the hotel. Or rather, I have to find a hotel. It's time for me to check in. I saw there was a hotel on Lenin Square when I passed by earlier. So let's see if I can maybe find a room there. Hello, Lenin Square. We meet again. Wow, look at how pretty this is. Look at how pretty Lenin is at sunset. The most beautiful square of the Soviet world. Here I said it. And now over there, there's the hotel that I was talking about. It says Gastine Dvor. It looks good, looks nice, looks appropriate. So let's see if they have some rooms for me. I need just one at the end of the day, so hopefully they'll have it. I can't imagine there are many tourists right now traveling to Tula. This fancy Soviet hotel. Check out the view from the corridor. Lenin Square. And finally, I made it to my Soviet room, into the Soviet hotel. I think I'll, I'll probably give you guys a review of this Soviet room uh, in, a, in the next video. I think I, uh, this video is getting quite long and also I'm quite tired. So the first thing that I wanna do is jump in the shower. Of course, let me just take off my shoes. And uh, yeah, I don't wanna spoil you guys anything. So I'll just see you next time. Thanks for joining and uh, yeah, see ya, bye.